Hello, welcome to Encompass Live. This is our Nebraska Library Commission's weekly webinar on all kinds of topics involving libraries. The webinar is being recorded and will be archived, and I'll show you where to find these at the end of the broadcast. Today's show is about one book for Nebraska kids and one book for Nebraska teens, which is a program that's been going on for a little while. Um, we, uh, as I said earlier, we have a special guest we hope will be able to join us today, Tom Watson. Um, he's not logged in yet, but he'll hopefully be coming along soon. And in the meantime, we'll talk about our program. I've just brought up our Nebraska Library Commission main web page, and this is where we'll, you can go to search for one book for Nebraska kids and te or teens. But I do want to show you, this is um, our blog part of our web page, and Krista put this up uh, when was it? Monday or last week? And this is just an announcement about our show today. And here you can see a, a picture of both books. Our one book for Nebraska kids is Stick Dog by Tom Watson. And our one book for Nebraska teens is The Girl Who Was Supposed to Die by April Henry for this year. Now, if you uh, log in at another time where this notice won't be there anymore, a good way to find it is to just click in our search box and type in one, and there you see one book for Nebraska t kids, one book for Nebraska teens, or one book, one Nebraska come up. If you click on either of these, you're, you're sent to a list. And this list includes one book for Nebraska kids slash teens, and that takes you to our main page. Um, the things that are on this page, the most recent things are, are towards the top. We have a general um, explanation at the beginning here about the program, how it operates, and who's been involved, the regional library systems, um, the Youth Advisory Board I'll talk about in a little bit, and um, then the books. So this year, like I said, Stick Dog by Tom Watson is our one book for Nebraska kids, and then the teens is The Girl Who Was Supposed to Die. And the way we have them set up now is stick dog on one side and the girl who was supposed to die on the other side. I did want to mention that this program got started after we had began, begun having the one book one Nebraska and I called this one book for Nebraska kids because I to me that made sense but it's confusing to everybody else so if you think I should rename it you can send in your vote. Most people call it one book one Nebraska kids and that's okay, because we all know what we're talking about. But I just plugged that name on it, One Book for Nebraska Teens, One Book for Nebraska Kids, because I thought, well, that's where we needed to go. Um, anyway, after the One Book, One Nebraska had gone for a few years, and I should have looked back to see just when Sharon Osenga and I talked. But this was Sharon Osenga. She's one of the co-directors of the Cent Central Plains Library System right now. This was her idea. She said, don't you think we should have something for kids? Which kind of is how I got got us going on this. Wouldn't it be great if kids all over Nebraska were talking about books? That's kind of from Sharon. And her idea was to start with, well, let's just, okay, hold on to your stomachs because we're going way down to the bottom. Here we go. This was one book for Nebraska kids, and it had a two-year span when we first started. And that was Rescue Josh McGuire by Ben Michelson. This was her suggestion, and we agreed that this would be a good book to start with. And we just said kids at that time. So here we have, again, a flyer, some details, and some puzzles you can use. The next year, 2008-2009, we did one book for Nebraska teens, and that was The Book Thief, was the first book for teens. And we were, at that time, were thinking high school age, because not as many programs are geared to the high school age. I had a, a number of librarians contact me and say, please, please, please make this for older, the older age group. So we did. And for several years, we alternated. One year, we denounced the one book for Nebraska kids. The next year, we denounced the one book for Nebraska teens. And that's why these all have a two-year span, because Rescue Josh McGuire was our one book for Nebraska kids for two years. And then we did The Green Glass Sea by Ellen Clages. 
and she was she it worked out that she could come and tour around Nebraska and visit a number of libraries, school and public, and talk with a whole bunch of kids across the state. It was a terrific opportunity for lots of people. We're so happy that she was able to do that with us. And and again, we have puzzles and activities sometimes, discussion questions. And see, all of this is still up here. You can still use these. The discussion questions are ones that, that we wrote here. If it looks like this, you know that they're ones that the staff here or the Youth Advisory Board wrote for the book. So if you decide, hey, I want to do that book this year, um, as far as I know, we still have the set that you can borrow from our um, book club kits sets. And maybe this is one you want to have your, your kids, your book discussion group read. Along with that, let's see, I'm going to oh, unwind by Neil Schusterman. He also, it was fortunate that he also was able to come to Nebraska for a week and, and tour across the state and meet again with lots and lots of kids and teens. As I scroll up slowly, see, we're still doing every other one. The Last Newspaper Boy in America by Sue Corbett. And then up here in 2012, you know I was going to guess that? That was our last year of just one book because that was Blank Confession by Pete Hoffman, which was our one book for Nebraska teens. And I'd had over time a number of librarians say, can't we have both books every year because I'll have my teens read the one book for this year. And then they say, when, what's the next book? When's the next book? And I tell them, well, that's two years away. And they go, oh, and are so disappointed. So we thought, okay, let's give that a try. So we did. We got going to kids and teens in 2013, which means they have one year of reigning supreme, but they're still all here, and you can still use them for a book discussion group or for your classroom if you want to have a classroom read. Um, there, the books are here. The puzzles are here. Activities. Some We've written activities for most of the books which are just some ideas instead of just, there are also discussion questions, but the activities are something that they can create something along with um, the book, like page 62 grade stands for greeting and review of aliens disguised for earth. So then we said, well, create, create some other acronyms for the intergalactic bed and breakfast. That's what the IBB stands for. I can't believe I remember that. Oh, there it is right above, intergalactic B&B. And so some kind of fun things that they can do and they can share with each other, you can put up on the wall, things like that. Along with this are puzzles. Um, I'm just going to hop down on my little list. Should we start with these puzzles? Should I start with a hard puzzle or an, or an easy puzzle? Easy, okay, crossword. Aliens on vacation. The sometimes the youth advisory board created puzzles and then I just put them together so they were in a shareable format. I have um, an, I think it's 20 children's librarians and teen librarians across the state who are on my youth advisory board. And they, for most of this time, have been the people who chose the books. I'd send a list of here's the ones that are being considered. And then there was a, a voting date that they had to reply. And um, they did that. And then they, they volunteered for which part of the page they were going to help with. So maybe they made the crossword puzzle. Maybe they found out information on the author, which is a lot easier now than it used to be with everybody having a, a home page. Makes it easier. But down here are the clues, just so you can kind of see what, what kinds of clues we have. The Milky Way is a, well, I'm guessing it's galaxy. And after you've read the book, you'll know why the visitors came to the bed and breakfast. And um, we work hard to, f to get questions that are definitive. So this is very likely the word that goes in there, relates to the book and isn't too hard. And I'm not the best at writing questions. My friend Janet here at the Library Commission is much better at that. So, um, and also the people on the, the Youth Advisory Board are very good at that. 
I'm good at finding hard puzzles. <laughs> Just kidding. For example, I love the clueless crossword puzzle. And the way this works is there are, it looks like a crossword puzzle, except there's no numbers, there's no clues. All there are are empty spaces. And then the words that go in there are divided by how many letters. So you know that, that there are four words that have eight letters. If you find a space of eight letters, you're not sure what's going to fit in there yet. But there are a few, like Amy and Aura, the 11 letter word, 13, 15, that there's only one. So you find that number and you know it has to be this that fits in there. And that gets you started on what other words fit other places where there are more words to choose from. Um, this I like this one because I don't have to write clues, <laughs> but I can put a whole bunch of words on the page. And um, I don't know how many of you have used any of these puzzles or if you think the clueless puzzle is hard or easy. Or if you think my other one I really like is the tile, is that tile puzzle? And this is fun because it's a quote from the book. This, and you, this is out of order, obviously. So they cut these letters apart and then they move them around to make the sentences. Sometimes it's just one sentence. And then this one, obviously, it's more than one. That's a long one. Wow. I don't have any clue what that is about anymore. <laughs> But that's a fun thing to do. So that's what we have here. We also have found websites for the book, sometimes a book trailer, which is fun. And then other times, like here for the teen book, Leviathan, we didn't really pull up any websites for the book. That's my, my fault for not getting on that. So you might be looking at this one day and go, oh, look, all of a sudden there's websites for that. Even though it's an, an older one book for Nebraska teens, we still can add some things that have either just come into existence or I finally got around to finding. So sometimes it's all my fault. Let's see, I'm just going to check over here. We're still waiting for Tom Watson. I hope he can get here and talk with us. Because I, I really didn't want you to have to listen to me all day, but you might have to. Under Stick Dog, we did find some fun things. You can see that we do not have our own discussion questions up yet. I think I wrote a few, but we did find some from HarperCollins. So we just point you there. Here's their discussion questions on the first book in the series, Stick Dog. There are five books so far, and I noticed that a new one is coming out soon. And if Tom Watson gets here, he can tell us more about that, we hope. Anyway, th these are the questions from Harper. It says that at the bottom. I should scroll down just a little more. I try really hard not to move the page too fast because I get car sick if people move pages around too fast on me. So I don't want to do that to you. So that's Harper Collins, And I think linking to their information is not a problem because that's why they put it up there in the first place. There's also um, some authors, the authors page, and also the stick dog pages, which are fun because it has a number of things. You can go here and, oh, look at this. Stick, the next stick dog book will be released October 4. What's he doing over there? Oh. But there are, um, let's see, some puzzles over here. Play, let's see. Learn to draw stick dog. That's what he was going to talk about today if he, if he can log in with us. Read about the books. Take a quiz. So lots of fun things here. And he did, I, I have it on my list for conference this fall. Stick Cat is a new book by him. And it, it came out in May. And it also has um, some pictures to download how to draw other things. So again, this is lots of fun. I really like this web page with all of the different possibilities here. Now we can go back to Stick Dog and then back here. And we do have a connection to the Stick Cat page right there and also down here. We have several puzzles that you can use and, and we're working on puzzles for the girl who was supposed to die because I got behind and and we're also working ahead for the future 
for next year's one book for Nebraska kids and teens because Janet is going to keep me on board for getting things done in a timely manner. Janet's here with me, but she's not going to talk, and that's okay. But if you want to ask her a question, you sure can. You can ask questions at any time by going to that question box and just typing in anything that you might want to know. Um, you can um, also give me some information. If you have already had a discussion group using one of our books for Nebraska kids or teens, any of them on there, and we'd love to hear from you about how it went. And if you have a microphone, we can unmute you so you can just talk, talk instead of typing. But if you'd prefer to type, we'd love to hear from you too. I know some librarians have had already a discussion on Stick Dog. I'm not going to name any names, but I know they may not may not be here today. But oh, okay. We have some people who would like to talk. I'm going to unmute them and let's see. Hello. You should be unmuted. Oh, you want Janet to talk. I didn't read that right. <laughs> I thought you wanted to talk. Okay, you're muted again. Just say hi, Janet. Hi, this is Janet, one of the other people here at the commission, and I really enjoy helping Sally with her books because I love reading kids and teens books. And we have a book club group here at the Library Commission. And it is centered around teens and kids books. So we try to read the books that we have for the one book for Nebraska kids and teens. And then we um, help Sally out with questions and discuss the book. So that helps her uh, make up puzzles and that kind of stuff, which is really fun, you know, helping Sally out. It's always fun. <laughs> I love having help. <laughs> and the Youth Advisor Advisory Board has done that too, help send in information, which I really appreciate. Because it all takes time, but it's fun, like you said. Um, we're still going to give people any time you want to to either type in a question in the question box or have me unmute your microphone and ask your question or um, have something to say about it, just to tell us something about how things are going with in your library. We'd love to hear from you. While we're talking, I do want to mention that um, we are, like I said, looking ahead already, and we would love to hear from you if you have suggestions for titles for next year. Then just email me or type them into your question box, and Janet will jot them down for me. The kids' books are aimed at what I call upper elementary, which is like grades three, four, five. And the teen books, most of the time, we, like I said before, we try to have it as, at a high school level. Um, we try to avoid anything too controversial because this is usually or often used in schools, and we know that there are issues there. Controversial is a very um, hard to define word. That's why I'm using it. But um, make a suggestion, and we'll see what the committee decides, because that's how it goes. And we have a question about how are the books selected. And after Sharon Osenga suggested the first book, Rescue Josh McGuire, um, I asked the Youth Advisory Board to be involved in this. And so they would send me book suggestions. I would come up with some book suggestions. And at that, when we first started, it was just either one book for Nebraska kids or one book for Nebraska teens. And I would send them the, the list of what had been suggested. And, of course, when did they get this list? Oh, about April. When did they have to vote? Oh, by the end of August. Does summer reading program ring a bell to anyone? These guys did so much helping me out with this in the middle of being extremely busy with the usual library things that are going on. I really appreciate it. So I would have a due date by when votes had to come in, and they would email me their votes, and I would tally it up and then announce to them what is won. Most of the time, that's how this has happened. This last year, I only gave them like two weeks. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it happened that way. And so they had very, I told them, let me know what you're familiar with. Let me know what you think from your experience would be a good book. 
before they tried to read all of the books. This time they didn't have that chance. So they voted on something they were familiar with that um, rang a bell. And then Janet broke the tie. I think you broke the tie this year, wasn't it? Yeah. Because sometimes it's a tie. <laughs> And I do vote, but I only get one vote, and um, I try not to, I wait, I, I mean, I know what my vote is, but I wait until everything's done. I try not to influence anybody to change their, I don't want them to change their vote. So basically, that's how the books are selected, and I ask all the librarians in the state to please send me suggestions, because I read a lot of books, but there's no way I read anywhere near to what's published every year. And I talk with librarians and they'll mention a book I haven't even heard of. How did that happen? I mean, I think I should have at least heard of all the books, but that's not how things go. So that's why I especially like to have people send me suggestions. So send me an email, type something up on the questions list here. If you know of a book that you think would be a good discussion book, if you suggest something, I probably won't put you on the spot and say, would you like to do a crossword puzzle for this book? But you can always say no. I might ask you. I don't know. Anyway, another thing I'd like to ask is if you've used our books and our puzzles and information here, I'd also love to hear from you if things are working. Is there a type of puzzle that I don't know about that kids love and I'm not doing because I'm not aware of it? Let me know. Show me how it works. We'll try to devise one that goes with the book. Uh, my youth advisory board has done that before. That's how some new puzzles have come up. While we're talking puzzles, I do want to show you the letter drop puzzle, which is really hard to write instructions for. So I'm going to click on the one book, uh, the stick dog book with the letter drop puzzle, and it looks like this. So you have these columns. This is a quote from the book. If you, When you read across, like we all do, that will be a quote from the book. On top of each column of letters are letters that all these letters go in these boxes. You just don't know what order they go in. It isn't going to be this order. That much you can count on. This one is not going to start with a B. But that's how you work. We gave you an example here with although. The A goes there, so we cross that out in the list. So you can see how that works. And you can see the comma with the H. So anything with a comma, like this T here, that probably goes at the end of a word, too, because you're not going to have a comma in the middle of a word. So I'm hoping that my description makes it fairly clear how this works. And I think it's fun because you've got all the letters there. You just have to figure out where they fit and what's going to be a good word. So when there's a two-letter word, you know, some things that'll probably go there. When there's a three-letter word, you can probably figure that out. And then you don't have as many letters left over to go in the other spaces. And yes, I'll go back here because on all of our puzzles, where did I just go? Letter drop puzzle, there is the answer page, which I'm not going to click on here because I'm just that way. But when you're looking at these and, and thinking about using them with your, your kids that come into your library or your students in your school, you can look at the answer and see if, if it seems reasonable to give them this puzzle. So all of these have answers, a separate page. And on the answer page, hey, let's go to the crossword answers. There's the crossword answers. And down at the bottom, no, I'm wrong. Oh, that's because this is so big. Excuse me. I was looking for the request for more. Is it on the answer pages most of the time? Okay, we'll go to the letter drop puzzle because the answer is that bad. Okay, here's the answer. It's in the puzzle, and then it's also as, a, as um, just phrasing down below. And what page it came from. And I just love this quote, so I thought, well, we have to go with that because that's how... That these books are. They're so fun. And we uh, continually ask you on different things. If the readers in your library come up with another one book idea, anything from a type of puzzle, a book to choose, an activity that should be included in this particular book, please let me know. Send it to me. We will add it to what we have already up there for our book. 
And we love to hear from kids and teens and librarians about that. Okay. Okay, I'm just hopping back here. There's a question over here about, do you have a favorite one book title? Oh, that's just, I don't have a favorite book. There are too many that I love. I love Aliens on Vacation. I love The Book Thief. I love Stick Dog. The Girl Who Was Supposed to Die is an excellent book. I think Love It is tough to say about a book that's about abduction and threats and things like that, but it's a well-written book. So I guess the answer is no, I don't have a favorite one. There's too many I like. And there's some books I like that didn't get voted to be a one book, and that's how it goes. I really thought it was a great choice, but I didn't win. <laughs> My choice didn't win. Does participation change when the author visits? Another good question. And I would have to say yes. Um, the author visits that we've had, um, Ben Michelson came for rescue Josh McGuire. He came for a week. He said later that we just about warm into the ground and poor, he was right, but he was so wonderful with the kids and with the adults. So we had Ben Michelson and Ellen Clages and Neil Schusterman all came, all were excellent with um, relating to the kids that, that they talked with. And they all went to both school libraries and public libraries. And um, the kids, I think that they're, they were hungry for this. And they so related, they were buying books and getting them autographed. And they were um, asking questions about the books that they had read and, and saying what they were going to read next. So the whole idea of this program, as we say at the beginning, was just to get kids another way. There are many ways, but this is one other way to get kids reading and talking. And it's great when they can talk about the same book um, because they get can, can get more into either the meat of the story or the fun of the story and the activities that kind of bring things around again and make them think some more about the book. And I, I just think that's wonderful when that can happen. So we've talked about kind of how this all came about, how things are decided, what kind of things we put up on the web page. And I'm just thinking now, why don't we have pictures, uh, a, a picture of each of the books up here? Is that um, an issue? Because it, when we saw that, here, I'm going back here. When we saw this, it was really fun to see the cover of the books. And I'm just thinking, how could I have not thought of that for all of this time? <laughs> but there we go. Janet's writing this down as something else to do. Because <laughs> I think that really, I'm, I'm expecting that librarians and teachers are looking at this page and not the kids themselves, although they might learn about it and go there to see the answers to the puzzle. And that's just fine with me because they're being active and, and they're finding out more about the book. But um, it still can be a little more interesting with a picture of the covers on these so you know what the book looks like and and then you can you know that stick dog is the first one and you can start looking for what are the other ones because that's another thing that happens with kids is when they talk about a book and especially with an author and they find out that there's more books they want to get their hands on them because they've enjoyed this one and like I said with stick dog there's five books so far and the next one is coming out it is titled stick dog slurps spaghetti so this is all of all these books are about eating because what is important to dogs food <laughs> and so they in each book they have some kind of an adventure trying to get a particular kind of food one's about donuts one's about pizza there's hot dogs and ice cream stick dog is the first one and that's mostly about getting the hamburgers that the people are are barbecuing in the park. And if you haven't read the books, I just would like to say a little bit that Stick Dog is kind of the leader of this group of other stray dogs. They never talk about, oh, I wish we had a home. Oh, I wish that we weren't stray. Nothing. They're, they're just functioning fine on their own. They don't hurt anybody, but they do want to get to the hot dogs before the raccoon in the tree does. They don't hurt the raccoon. They just want to get to the hot dog vendor first. 
and they're focusing on, um, yes, I think that is book two. Janet asked me if that was book two. Let's go find out what, well, never mind. We'll find out later. What stick dog? Um, oh, stick dog home. You can, you can talk. It's okay. The books. That's a good idea. Okay. Stick dog wants a hot dog. What a good idea to go to that page. There's the first one, which is about the hamburgers in the park. And the other dogs are, you know, some, part of the fun is how they're named. The Dalmatian's name is Stripes. No explanation given. He does have spots on him. There's a dachshund with named Karen, a mutt named Mutt, and a poodle named Poo Poo. And each of the other dogs have ideas for how they can get, like for this one, the first one, the hamburgers. Their ideas are usually extreme. I, th uh, I think it's in the first book where someone mentions a trampoline. If they could get on the tra a trampoline and then bounce on it and get over and they could somehow grab the hamburgers. Stick dog is always very diplomatic. Well, that's that's an interesting idea. He would say, now, does anyone here have a trampoline? Oh, no, no one does. Well, that's just not, we'll, we'll keep that as a good idea for the future, but for right now, we can't use that. This is his approach. I think it shows great um, leadership and understanding and respect for the others. He doesn't, I said it in a more of a condescending way. He isn't condescending, but he does know that's not going to work. We don't, first off, we don't have a trampoline. And second, bouncing on it isn't going to get us the hamburgers. But he doesn't say that to them. So they come up with some strategies, but eventually they do end up with a delicious dinner, just so you know. So their stick dog wants a hot dog is book two. Chases a pizza is book three. Dreams of ice cream is four. Oh, Tries to take the donuts. See, now this hasn't been updated for a while, so I feel better. No bad on you, Tom Watson, or whoever's working on this. But but um, this book is out, and I've read it. it. It is also fun, and it made me hungry for donuts. <laughs> and it's fun because um, there's also the British version of the covers for these books. Some quite the same as ours. Um, Janet was pointing out that this is this is a good book for everybody, but particularly when you have reluctant boy readers, this one will grab them because not only is it stick feet uh, dogs in the book, everything is drawn like a stick person, stick dogs, stick everything. There are lots and lots of illustrations, a la Diary of a Wimpy Kid. But it's really fun. And the type is got some good white space between the letters. It doesn't have like um, lines, like it's, a, oh, she's going to get one for me. Yeah, it's like lined paper. It's like a, a journal in school with lightly lined paper. And so there's a great deal of white space. It's not not written as a, a handwriting, but printed as type, but um, very readable. And there's a stick squirrel in this one and a stick tree, <laughs> pretty much a stick tree. So it's, it's fun. It's good for reluctant readers, which often are boys, but not always. And um, something that no one's going to be embarrassed to be carrying around in their hands because it's a good book. Okay. There's, I have another question. What if I have a group that wants to borrow a set of books? How do I do that? How convenient that they would ask that. Let's go back and... Um, back here. Sorry. Is it book club kits? Let's see what we type in here. Whoops. I guess I need to use the right letters. Book club kits. There it is right down there. Book club kits. You can. So here's our search. Book, book club kits from the Nebraska Library Commission. There are other possibilities, but of the sets that we have here, you can search for a title or author. I'm going to search for. 
What are you saying, Janet? Do what keyword? Under keyword, if you'd put in O B O K. One book, one kit. See? And then search. And search. And here's O. That's so handy. Here are all of them that we've done for one book for Nebraska kids and one book for Nebraska teens are right here. You can see this one was kids, aliens on vacation, blank confession. And you can look at what the grade levels are suggested. There are the discussion questions included. If it's number one in a series, this, there are, I read the second book. I, I'm thinking there might be a third one that I haven't read yet in that series. All fun. And it, and it lets you know where you can go find, okay, also the puzzles. We can just click here for the book thief and hop over to the page we were on before and scroll down to where that book is highlighted and find the puzzles. So this is very helpful. I'm glad you had me type that in there. So if you know one you want, like the last newspaper boy in America, you can click on request this kit and then you get a form to fill out who you are, what your library is, your name, email. It plugs in the one that you want to request. And then if this isn't available in the time frame you have in mind, you can put in a second or third and third choice if you need to. And then how many copies you will need if you want our whole set and it's available. Good, you can borrow that. Up to 30 copies are available for this title. Oh, it's directed. I just thought it said sometimes up to 30. Thank you. So this particular title, you could request 25 or 30. If you're doing this for a, a classroom read, for example, that would be good to have. Then you, then it says if you need more copies than we own, you're going to have to request them through interlibrary loan. And that means asking for them two to three weeks in advance. So what date do you want to hand these out? What date will your group, group meet? Anything else you think we ought to know? For example, you might say, uh, looking for an audio version. A few of our book sets have an audio version, but not that many. So that's um, rare, I guess I'd say. And then you send the form. And we'll respond and let you know if those are available and when we're going to put them in the mail, things like that for you. So that's a good question. Thank you. Now we go back back again if we scroll down a little bit if you forget that the search term is OBOK if you go down more down just a little entire collection in Nebraska oh, there we go there it is because that gives you suggestions at the bottom ways to search you could have also put in one book oh let's try that just for fun that might be that might also include one book, one Nebraska titles. Let's find out. Yes, it does, because now we have some titles that are not one book for Nebraska kids, but other um, one book, one Lincoln title there. So you can get a lot of ideas from this besides the one book for Nebraska kids and teens for books that your adult or teen or children's book group might be interested in. This is a wonderful page that um, Vern designed for us. And um, I should remember who put all this information in there. I think a lot of people added, uh, added entries for this to be as, as efficient and, and complete as it is. So again, book club kits is what we searched on. And this page came up in case you want to borrow some books. Let's see. Now, where were we? Just go back. Go again. back here and then go back to your block. Here. I'm yes. going to take the shortcut because then I don't have to type. Aren't I lazy? Back to here. <laughs> go up to the top a oh, little bit. Oh, Jenna okay. wants to point something out on this page. Okay. Uh, up in the second paragraph at the bottom, it says the Library Commission has many other book bags available check them out here which oh. takes you right to our book club kit page yeah. yeah okay okay so right off of sally's one book one one book for nebraska kids page it takes you, you right to the book right club. to this that's right. good to know mm -hmm. 
And as I was looking at that, I was reminded of something I was going to point out earlier that you had mentioned before the show began, which is we do have guidelines for choosing for books that are on our list. They're not very involved, but you can find that here. See the Youth Advisory Board also votes and chooses the books and then helps provide the information. Here's our guidelines. It cannot be a Golden Sower, one of the 10 Golden Sower nominees for that year, except for the teen choice, because the teen group said, that's okay, we, we need to get more teens reading. Not as many teens are involved in the Golden Sower program as the younger kids. So we can still do that until they tell me to stop and then I'll change it. We want the book to be out in paperback. We buy them one set for our book club kits, usually 10. And then for other people, if they want to buy some, either to give out to the group or to have in their library, the paperback approach is less expensive. So we want it to be in paperback. We want the book to fit the suggested age group, which is tricky, I know, but um, there are there are things that we know is, are great for kids in grade school to read and books that are great for kids in high school to read and they're not generally the same. <laughs> And also we want some good discussion points. In our book group that, that Janet talked about where we get together and discuss all kinds of children and teen books, there have been a couple three times where we had a book that we all really liked. It was great, it was fun, and we had nothing else to say about it. There just weren't discussion points. And that's not to say that book was bad, it wasn't bad. We, we loved it, enjoyed it, but there really wasn't much to discuss. It just happened that way. So we want the book that we select to have some good discussion points, some issues that that um, it, it could be bullying, it could be divorce, it could be a fantasy where they get lost in the universe, all kinds of different things. But there needs to be something happening in there that you can talk about with kids. And one of the things I like best about discussion of books is that it's everybody's viewpoint. And it's so amazing to hear the different things that kids and adults come up with that I never thought of about a book. And so nobody's wrong. I, when I read this, I thought they meant this. Ooh, when I read that, I thought they meant that. And it's just interesting and it kind of broadens the book for everyone when that happens. So when you're on this page, then you can also return to one book for Nebraska kids, etc. Oh, I have another question. Do we track participation in this program, number of readers and programs? etc. We do have forms available. I haven't looked for that lately. I better get on the ball. Janet's writing it down. So that people who do have discussion groups can choose to send us an evaluation. We had this, this discussion, this many kids attended or teens. Um, this is how it went to let us know who's using it and how, how things are going. And also if they have suggestions. This is not a requirement. I know there are people out there having book discussion groups that I'm not aware of who they are or what books they're reading or what age group it is, but it's fun if you don't mind when you have a book discussion group, particularly using one book for Nebraska kids or teens, to send that in to me so that we can kind of keep track of the people we hear from at least. But like I said, I'm not sure I have that on here right now. Mm -hmm. Janet says no. Oh, by the way, we did take a hiatus last year, 2015, because we needed to get re reorganized. And you can tell how organized I am because I let the ball drop again. And we were slow getting this up. Not Janet's fault, my fault, but she's got a time frame for me now. So I'm, I'm going to keep up with it. And my youth advisory group will help me keep up with it, too. Some other things that we were going to mention. Oh, I just I don't know if I really brought this up, but if you're using any of our books and you're using any of our puzzles, I said, tell me about puzzles that you are aware of that I don't have. But I also want to know if the puzzles that are there that the kids are using are are too easy, too hard, too complicated or or too simple so we can adjust. What, what we offer now is kind of how we think the group 
a general group of kids or teens would would go. And someone uh, one year, some people on my advisory board mentioned that they didn't think that teens really did puzzles, and that could very well be true. But I still do. We still do puzzles for the teen book because I just don't know. I think some of them are are um, might be take home puzzle. Here's a puzzle. Take it home if you want to. Do it or not particularly for teens. It can also just be sitting out there so kids who've read the book can just sit and do a puzzle about the book. Or they can do a tile puzzle even if they haven't read the book and maybe that'll get them to read it. It could just be a, a what's it called? A program. One of the, oh, there's a word for it. Anyway, just something that's sitting around that, that kids can look at or not. Sitting there on the table. Appetizer. <laughs> An appetizer, <laughs> Janet said. <laughs> because what's our goal here is to get kids and teens reading and having a discussion about the same book when that works out for them. There's, there's no rule about uh, how this happens. In your library, if it's easier to say, hey, teens, if it's summer, for example, this June, everybody who wants to can read The Girl Who Was Supposed to Die. And then at the end of the month, we're going to have a, a quiz or a um, what is it, like a Jeopardy program you could make up, something like that, that they could do this on their own, read it, think about it, do some puzzles to kind of get the thoughts in. And then you could either have a live Jeopardy program where everybody comes at the same time, or you could have a quiz page for them to do on their own, to turn in and get points for summer, things like that. It doesn't have to be always the same. So how it works for your library is great. And that's something else we love to hear from librarians is what kind of program how you're using it maybe you're using it like I just said as a suggestion let's all read this book and, and then we'll do our quiz pages and with stick dog you just got to draw a stick dog right I think that's a, a law you don't have to draw the original character stick dog you could draw stripes or poo poo if you want to but you just got to draw a dog I think <laughs> maybe you could get away with not doing it but I think the kids would yell and want it. So I'm looking again and for some reason Ted Watson has not logged in. I'm thinking something came up. He told us that he was traveling to several libraries this week to give presentations and that at the time that we we booked him he was available this morning but things come up sometimes that we're not aware of. I'm going to double check my email to see if anything, here's Tom. Oh, he sent it to me. I'm going to type to him to log in. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I have to go find that out. Okay, let's see. It's got to be here. Calendar. Calendar. Yeah, that makes sense. And today. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then because it tells tell him you to right go here. here on okay. this, tell him to go here. Where does he click? Okay, click on number one. Let's see. Sorry, I know this is on the air, and we're just typing some things in here. Okay, I sure glad I checked my, that was at 10.09, oh gosh, I thought I checked sooner than that. Okay, well maybe he'll log in now and we can hear a little bit from him before the show is over, that would be terrific. And this way he doesn't know all of the things I said and, <laughs> and he, can, he can be fresh. <laughs> so I'm hoping that he'll be able to log in. We'll give him a couple minutes. In the meantime, well, you don't really need to see those instructions, do you? Let's go back here. I think this has been a successful program <clears throat> because our books do get checked out. Um, we do occasionally hear from someone who's had a, a book discussion group and how things went, which is always enjoyable. And we do sometimes get things from people who um, 
make suggestions for something to add to our page here. They found a website that they thought went along with it. For like under the girl who was supposed to die, we have Kirkus reviews there that, that Janet found for us, which gives the review from Kirkus of the book. And she also found a book trailer online for that. So this connects you to that site where these things are. We do not pull that into our web page, but connect you to the web page where these are, which is good. Okay, let's see. See, I think if I click twice, then all of a sudden he'll be up there as an attendee. That maybe he gave up on me. Oh, I'll be so sad. Do we have any other questions or thoughts while we wait, just in case Tom Watson is able to connect? <laughs> Janet, do you have anything you'd like to add from your viewpoint of giving me nudges to get these things on our time frame we need? Um, I will mention just one thing about the teen book, The Girl Who Was Supposed to Die. As I was reading it, I was paying attention to how long this is happening. You know, the book is so many pages. But the time frame of how it happens isn't very long. So, you know, sometimes books are like months or weeks or days or years or whatever. But when you when you actually sit down and look at it, the time frame is I, it's less than 48 hours. Wow. So it's like happening very quickly. You know, it's uh, it's fast. It's really is fast paced. I kind of forgotten that time frame part of it. I'd like to point out that Janet pulled together the description of the girl who was supposed to die. And it sounds a little freaky when you say, do you like abduction, escape, and paranoia? But <laughs> um, yeah, she was supposed to die and they're still after her. So it is an, a very action oriented, but also trying to figure out what's going on. Who am I? What's going on? And where should I go to be safe? Is another good question. And and all the while thinking, first of all, she didn't know anything about her family. And then once she started getting infor more information back, she got, oh, maybe my family doesn't exist anymore. Maybe they're all dead. You know, oh, in yeah. addition to what's happening to herself personally, there's this other thing. What happened to my family? So it's it can be a very... Um, emotional book, you know. Right. But, actually, and April Henry is a popular author, too, with the teens. She's, has, she's an adult author as well. She has a number of adult books that are popular and a number of teen books. She has a teen book series that, of course, I can't remember the name of right now, that are popular. Ooh. Janet says we should go to author information. What a good idea. Here she is books for teens and adults for adults and teens okay I'm the body in the woods oh excuse me that's the first book in the point last scene series which I've read and well that is so fun <laughs> they're it's not fun because they're looking for evidence for a murder but that's a great picture the body they people are going on a hike and they find a body in the woods and this is the first book in this the series the point last scene very well, very good book, and the other ones are good too, so you just never know which one should be the one book for Nebraska teens. And should we ever have a different book by an author we've had before, or is that fair to all the other authors in the world? That's another good question. And I did notice when, Sally, when we looked at um, guidelines. Is that here? at the top but just the a top. little bit Guide. under our guidelines it doesn't say anything about how old the oh, books should be or yes. you know do you read things that are do we select books that are more than five years old six years old yes we do okay. we have i guess that's kind of not really stated but the book must be out in paperback is kind of my way of saying it does need to be available and mm -hmm. there are a number of books that are around for a long time still available in paperback so that's that's good and yes if you have an old favorite 
check it out, see if you can still buy it, and then send me the title if you'd like. And we don't always buy brand new books. True. Because we have purchased some used books from Amazon or other online retailers. Also from library book sales. Yes, we are your customers too. <laughs> And sometimes when I go to the Scholastic Warehouse sale, I find a title that of, a, of one book for Nebraska kids that, that we can include in our book sets. So we get the books all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, there's Tom. Oh, yay. Hello, Tom. I'm going to make you an organizer. Let's see. No, a presenter. Yes, I want you to be a presenter, and I'm going to unmute your line and let's okay. see can you talk to us uh let's see can you hear me yes we can uh, now. okay so i need to show my screen right yes okay hold on a second have you already started oh yes we're kind of winding down whoops i'm i'm, <laughs> I'm but you have plenty of time don't worry about it I did something bad. Okay. All right. Hang on just a second, because I'm going to change our screen sharing to your screen, because I think, okay. oh, well, I, I can't do that just now. I'm going to ask the people in the laptop room if you can see Tom Watson's screen. How am I going to know that? Because I... You'll be, you'll be seeing an incredibly handsome man. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Let's see. We can see Tom's face. Yay. Okay. So you are being recorded. Thank you so much. And you sure, sure. So can everybody hear me too, I assume? Oh, that's a good question. I believe so. Linda and everyone, can you hear him? Oh, they say yes, incredibly handsome. And yes, we can hear him. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I'm just going to um, – usually what I do with a school visit is – I will go to, I will do a drawing lesson with the kids um, for the stick dog books and I'll draw all the characters. And I thought if you guys are teaching the class or, you know, if you're talking about stick dog in class, it might be kind of a fun interactive thing to do with your own kids in class to be able to draw the characters. So the idea here is that we're going to draw them together. So I hope you all have pencil and paper or you can get them relatively easily and we'll draw the characters, and then you can draw them with the kids if you're actually using the book in class. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. I have pencil okay. on paper myself. Okay, good. This will not take very long. It'll take about five minutes, and then if, um, you know, if anybody has any questions or anything, I'm happy to, happy to take those. And it sounds like, Sally, maybe you're going to have to kind of be the person who gets them back and forth, right? Yes. Okay, that's no problem. Okay, so let's draw a stick dog, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw it down here, then I'm going to hold it up to the camera, okay? Great. Let's see. Stick dog starts with a rectangle. Let me make sure you're seeing that. I can do that. <laughs> the idea is that kids can copy these. Even the little guys can copy these drawings if you if – you, Show them step by step how you do it. His ear is a triangle. A triangle on one corner. And I always tell the kids that the only difficult thing is the head, and it's not really hard after you do it a couple of times. I always tell them it looks like a pair of pants turned sideways. <laughs> I like that a pair of pants. Oh, gosh. I can do this. <laughs> his nose goes right here. So, Sally, how many people do you have today? Got a few? We have a few, yes. We have um, had 15 registered and not quite as many showed up. But the thing is, this will be viewed many, many, many times as an archive. So Good. That's the thing. Good. So this is his eye. Two circles. To, oh, over the, okay. And the kids are using pencil and 
paper, they can erase that line if it goes through the eyes. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Technically, I'm using pen. I told you I had a pencil, but it's a pen. His tail is a squiggle? Just a squiggle. How am I doing, Janet? Great. <laughs> and his legs are very, very difficult. Oh. So that is Stick Dog. One of the things that I really try and get across in the books, there are six of the, well, the sixth one comes out on October 4th. Um, one of the things I really try and get across in the books is that um, Stick Dog is really the leader of the pack, but, and his friends, not that bright sometimes. <laughs> and, um, but he's really patient. He's an incredible example of a good friend. Um, and his sort of his leadership, I think, is something that kids can identify with. So it might be lead a good classroom discussion, like listen to these ridiculous ideas that um, his friends have for him, and how he kind of diplomatically says they're dumb without saying they're dumb. <laughs> so four more dogs. We'll do the Dalmatian next. And I'll speed up a little bit. We have a comment while you're drawing. It says, this is great. Ha, huh? I could put this on a bulletin board. There you go. So, so the Dalmatian. he's a Dalmatian. I went ahead and did the body and the ear at the same time, but it's exactly the same as Stick Dog. Going the other way. Okay, I can do this. I get a little freaked out by the ear, but I'm doing okay. Another pair of pants. Same nose, same eye, except she's a girl. So she gets eyelashes. Oh, okay. That's the only thing that distinguishes my characters as male or female is eyelashes. I didn't and, realize uh, that. Dalmatians have thick tails, so I always say you need to draw a banana at the end. Oh, a banana. Same legs. Now, if you look at those two, I purposely did them on the same piece of paper because you can tell they're pretty much the same dog except for eyelashes and a thick tail, right? Yeah. But she's a Dalmatian. So she gets spots everywhere. And that's when she starts looking like her own dog. And her name is Stripes. And she's, you know, covered in spots. Okay, three more dogs. Okay. We'll do the uh, poodle next. His name is Poo Poo. And I can tell you, quite honestly, that there are times when I really regret naming that dog Poo Poo. <laughs> he starts with a rectangle. But then I go into schools and I'm with like 200 second graders at the same time, and I say poo-poo into the microphone really loud, and they all crack up, so <laughs> I, guess I'm glad I, I guess I'm glad I did. His ear is still a triangle, but it's made out of squiggles. I'm going to try and hold this up here. Triangles, okay. I'm going to start at the top and then go wider down and see how I do And this time we're not going to do a pair of pants. One of the things you need to know about poo-poo, and it's, evident in the books is that he hates squirrels. He really doesn't like squirrels. So we're going to give him a different kind of head and pretend that he's looking up into a tree at a squirrel. So we're going to draw like an angry poo-poo. <laughs> Sorry to be doing this. I can't tell if it's in front of the camera or not. It is. Thank you. Perfect. So nose is regular. Got it. But we're going to make him snarling. And the way we do that is we do a flat squiggle for a mouth. Oh, okay. Got that. He does look And good. we're going to do a regular eye, but we're going to give him a mean eyebrow because he doesn't like squirrels. Okay. The tail is a squiggle, but at the end of the tail, there's a puff ball. Is 
and squiggly like the eater. Same legs, but at the end of the legs, more puffballs. That's what makes them look like a poodle, hopefully. Oh. <laughs> it was really interesting when I first started the books that what breeds I could use. You know, I really wanted to use a German Shepherd, but I couldn't figure out how to draw a stick German Shepherd. So, you know, a Dalmatian, you just throw some spots on stick dog, you got a Dalmatian. Poop, you just add some puffballs, you got a poodle. Um, so it was really the drawings that um, helped determine how, what kind of characters I had, which is kind of interesting. Two more dogs. We have Mutt and Karen. I'll do Mutt right here. He's a little bit on the bigger side. So his rectangle is just a little bit more like a square. Not, not too much, but just a little bit chubbier. Okay. He's the only dog who does not get a triangle for an ear. He gets like a dinosaur footprint or a penguin's flipper. I'm going to have to see this. Cause I'm going to... It's not colored in in the book. I'm going to color it in here so we can see it better. Thank you. Yeah. Ooh, that's... And this is kind of interesting if you're going to draw with kids. Because we changed the proportion of his body, we changed the proportion of his head just slightly to match his body. And the way we do that is we make the top of the pair of pants just a little bit thicker than the bottom to make it match a little bit better. Ah, okay. Hmm. Nose and eye, he's a boy. No eyelashes. Three boys, two girls. Next one's a girl. Squiggle. Legs. But we're not done with him yet. Because the thing you need to know about Mutt is he's shaggy, he's furry. In the adventures, he's going to lose things in his fur or even store things in his fur on purpose that they use as tools to snatch the food sometimes. So we need to make him look shaggy. So we just draw squiggles all over his body. So how much did you practice before you figured out that that would look like the squiggles would look like hair because they do. <laughs> I read the book and I know he has a lot of hair. Yeah, yeah. The um, I originally did it kind of like the ear on Poo Poo that it was just a squiggly mess, and then I was like, no, that doesn't look right. So it took it took a little bit of time to nail down. You know, the the real thing that was driving the process was that I wanted them to be so simple so that kids could copy them. You know. Right. So our last dog is named Karen. He's a dachshund. So her, she's long and skinny and short, so her rectangle is long and skinny. Okay. Triangle for an ear. Again, in the book it's not filled in. I'm filling it in, in here so we can see it better. And then I always tell the kids, you know, we changed Mutt's head to match his body, so we have to do the same thing for Karen. So. She doesn't get a regular pair of pants. She gets skinny jeans. <laughs> oh, great. To match her body. Nose, eye, eyelashes. Perfect. Really simple tail for Karen and short legs. I accidentally gave Poo Poo short legs. I had to make them longer. <laughs> so that is Karen. She is, without question, the biggest spaz in the books. <laughs> um, in the fifth book, in the uh, Stick Dog Tries to Take the Donuts, he, uh, she drinks a great big coffee and just becomes over-caffeinated and just freaks out for the entire book. <laughs> Which is which was really a lot of fun for me to write. So those are the, those are the five characters. There's also, as some of you probably know, is, uh, there's a stick cat series. I won't draw the stick cat. That that first book came out four or five months ago. I got I got one here somewhere. Um, 
And, and that's uh, on my list for this fall. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I'm list. so happy with it. I think it's the funniest. I love the stick dog books, but I think this is the funniest thing I've written. The second one of those comes out in um, April, and the next stick dog book comes out in a couple of weeks, October 4th. So I'm happy to do any questions you have. I, I was so pleased when I heard about this one book, one Nebraska thing. Stick Dog has won a, a few awards here and there. But I love the idea that um, kids in, in a whole state might be reading something at the same time. I think it's a terrific idea. We do it here in Chicago, actually. It's just a Chicago reads kind of thing. And I think it's an idea that's catching on. And um, I was so I got just some Google alert or something about it, and I thought it was really neat. So I was happy to reach out and you know contact you, Sally, and be able to make this kind of thing happen. It's a lot of fun for me. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. If not, I know you all got jobs to do, and I got things to write, so I can just scooch too. I'll leave it totally up to you. Well, we have a couple of questions. One of them is. Um, as you came up with the names for the dogs, I mean, Poo Poo, the poodle makes sense, and Stick Dog makes sense, and uh, Stripes is fun because she's spotted. But how right. do the kids react to the names of the dogs, or do they pay attention to that? Oh, they totally pay attention, yeah. <laughs> and I've always thought it's funny when people name their dogs human names, so I had to have one of those. That's how Karen got her name. She was almost Mildred, but I wanted to do something a little bit more... Um, common, I guess. I love old-fashioned names. The raccoon in the second book is named Phyllis. I love that name, too. And I'm looking for a character for Gladys. I really want to use the name Gladys. I just love those old-fashioned female names. They're just great. So the kids, yeah, they do pay attention to the names a lot. And like I said, when I say poo-poo out loud, you know, I get big laughs, <laughs> especially from the younger guys, especially from the younger well, uh, a quick question now also about Stick Cat. Um, yeah. I know that Stick Cat is Stick Cat's name, and her friend, her friend, am I right? Yeah, his friend, yeah. His friend, excuse me, is Edith. Right. Are there going to, in that you said another book's coming out in April, are there going to be any more Stick Cats in that group, or do your Stick I don't think so. One of the things, um, I know, I, I just finished the third book, and it's all approved and everything. We're working on. I'm working on the pictures now. But um, so I know in the second and third books that um, there are just Stick Cat and Edith. Um, one of the things I found in the Stick Dog series is with five characters, it's hard. You know, these books are 20 to 22,000 words long, and it's hard to give everybody a role to play when you have five characters. Oh, that's it's true. A lot to keep. Um, organized on the page and in the story. So I kind of purposely with Stick Cat said, I'm going to start with two cats. And it gives me a lot more sort of creative freedom to develop the characters in that first book. You know, it, it takes a while in the Stick Dog series to find out that, you know, Karen's a spaz. You know, you, you kind of get hints of it, then you kind of realize it, you know, you're kind of three or four books into it before you're like, oh, this is sort of, you know, set in cement now that, that this is who this is. So there won't be any more cats for a while, I don't think. We have another question. We um, Someone wants me to ask you about the pets that you own or have owned. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a dog here at home. Uh, he's upstairs now. Uh, his name is Shadow. He's a Labrador Newfoundland mix. Um, I like to say he looks like a lab with a bad perm. He's all black. Uh, he's a big dog. He weighs 120 pounds. Um, and I get a lot of my ideas from him. I'll tell, I'll, I share this story with kids all the time uh, when I'm at schools that uh, when we're in the car, it's my wife Mary and I in the front and Elizabeth and Jacob are in the back. But Shadow will be sitting back there with them. But he will sort of lean forward to look out the windshield with us. You know, he wants to see where we're going. And every time um, we go under a bridge, he ducks. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. <laughs> uh, which, which I always tell the kids, I'm like, that's kind of how dumb my dog is. You know, he thinks the bridge is going to hit him in the head. <laughs> but I get, I get ideas from Shadow because, you know, the, the 
story is, you know, the Stick Dog story is that, you know, Stick Dog is the leader, he's the smart one, and he really helps his friends who have kind of ridiculous ideas in ways to get the food to kind of calm them down, to keep them on the path, you know, to get them away from squirrels that are distracted by, you know, like all that kind of stuff. So Shadow is very useful uh, as a frame of reference for those four kind of dumb dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone's asking you, so no cats at your house? No, I'm actually allergic, believe it or not. So um, the, the cat stuff is totally fictionalized. Some of my college roommates had cats, but that's about it. The, you know, the Stick Cat book was actually supposed to fit into the Stick Dog series. It was supposed to be the fifth Stick Dog book. And I had worked out a way with the narrator to kind of explain why he was going to do a Stick Cat story instead of a Stick Dog story. And I sent it to Harper Collins, and they just, they just went crazy for it. And they were like, oh, my gosh, no, this thing has to be, be its own series. And I really think the reason they... Um, the reason they wanted to make it its own series is not necessarily for Stick Cat, who's a terrific character, but is sort of similar to Stick Dog, but it's because of his best friend, Edith. She is just an absolute character, and they just fell in love with her at Harper. Uh, she is um, she's prissy like a lot of cats are. She's fluffy. She's very um, standoffish. Um, she's not the brightest cat in the world, but um, she's also incredibly brave. Um, their adventures are not about food. They're uh, completely different. And it takes sort of her courageous courage to, to help them achieve their mission sometimes. And uh, you'll just have to read Stick Cat, and I think you'll agree that um, <laughs> Edith is crazy. She's my favorite <laughs> character to write about right now. She is great. I'm looking forward to the second book in April. Just a yeah, quick question about, you said you were doing the drawings on the, the book now, and I'm yeah. assuming that even though they are stick dogs and cats, the drawing isn't as quick and easy as we all think it would be. No, it isn't. Um, it takes some time, but the I have help with the final illustrations on the book, and that's something I always try and point out. Uh, a guy named Ethan Long does the final illustrations in the book, so I will I will do all the original sketches, and then I will send them to Harper, who sends them to Ethan, who does the final sketches. And the thing I've realized that he does, I, it's sort of like, I don't know if it's co-illustrator or what. We've talked, Ethan and I have talked about it, like, I don't know how to talk about this. Um, we've sort, one of the things I really appreciate, you know, he's an artist, and I'm, <laughs> I'm completely comfortable saying I'm not. Um, and, but he shows motion with stick figures. That is just, it's like magic to me. You know, he's a real artist, and he can show a dog, like, nodding its head or, or you know, yeah. turning it away or going around a corner or speeding up or slowing down with motion lines that I just think is incredible. So he takes sort of my basics, but he's able to add his own little tweaks to it that bring them to life more than I can. And I'm so happy that we have him to, to help. But really, the, the story of the illustrations, as I said before, is that kids can copy them, and kids can draw. I can't tell you, I mean, I've visited with thousands and thousands of kids, and there is never a time when we don't have a good time drawing these characters together. And then I'll do actual illustrations from the books, too. I do Karen the Doggy Tornado, which is in the first book, and some other things. And it's, if you can sort of, as a teachers or librarians or whatever, get the kids with pencil and paper and go through these drawings like we just did and do it with them. You're going to find that they, that this little spark happens and it makes them identify with the books in ways that I think is real, are really interesting and fun. Thank you so much. And I just want to point out that earlier before you were on, we were on your Stick Dog webpage where there is a, a link to how to draw a Stick Dog. So anyone yeah. watching this and needs a reminder, I'm hoping that that will help them remember what you just showed us today so they can get there's, a reminder of how to do that with their kids. There's a um, video that I always want um, adults to look at at the website, too. It's um, it's on the videos page, along with the How to Draw a Stick Dog and stuff. 
Um, it's some, I forget what it's titled, but it's something like Family Reading Fun with Stick Dog or something. And it's a father and a son in bed, and they're mo reading the third Stick Dog book. And their mom is actually, um, the mom in the family is a librarian. And she took a, pic it took a short video of the dad reading to the son in bed just through a crack in the door. They didn't know it was happening, and she sent it to me, and she let me put it up. But it's essentially uh, the dad laughing so hard that he has to stop reading to his son. And I just think it's hilarious. It's my favorite video that's stick dog related uh, out there, and I'd love for you guys to see it. And it's, it's also indicative of what I try to do in the books, and that's to make them not just fun for kids. The humor in the books... I think is really sort of adult humor in kids' books. So I get a lot of nice things from parents that say, you know, things like, I enjoyed reading this too. I got a lot of laughs from this too. Um, and that's something I'm sort of proud of. This is, you're not going to find like snarky, mean spirited, slapsticky humor. This is all irony, self deprecation. Uh, I like to think it's sort of sophisticated for the third and fourth grade crowd. So check out that video. It's a lot of fun. We, while you were talking, we went back to Stick Dog webpage and clicked on videos on the side, and we scrolled down, and there it is at the bottom. It says, Hilarious Family Reading Time with Stick Dog. So right, that's fun. Take, take a couple minutes of your life and look at that. It's a, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Well, thank you so much. I, I, don't want, I don't have any more questions right now. I don't want to take all your time. Uh, we no, really I'm glad we were able to do it, Sally. It's a lot of fun. I've never used this go to webinar thing. It's kind of cool. Uh, we Sally and I practiced this last week, and I couldn't figure out how to work the camera on my computer. So I'm glad I'm glad we got that working anyway. Well, and I will, I'll go ahead and sign off if I can figure out how. And um, uh, thanks again. And Sally, just email me if you need anything else. I love this one uh, book, one Nebraska thing, and I'm I'm certainly willing to to help you in any way get that moving. Thank you. I'll, I'll contact you if I think of something. Maybe somebody will send me a suggestion. I'll go, ooh, let's see what Tom thinks of this. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, thanks a lot. I'll see you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so I'm not really sure what screen you guys are seeing anymore. <laughs> Let me just, I think it's over here probably still. Let's see the questions. Let's see if there's oh, anything else. One there. second. Oh, sorry. Oh. Well, I don't know. Um, I, uh, under questions, we have um, thank yous to um, to Tom Watson, and I'm, I'm just scrolling through the questions because things went goofy on me. But um, thank you to him for his time, and so um, we're really I'm. Still feeling bad that I didn't check my email sooner, I guess. But anyway, for those of you who um, want just a quick... Oh, I don't like it when that happens. Okay. <laughs> Let's go here and go home. I'm going to drag this over here because I think this is where things are showing up. And if I'm wrong, then I'm just kind of wasting your time. But I just want to show you where um, the end cup of slide... See, when you type in Encompass, here comes Encompass Live Show. At the other one are our, um, our, and here you click on that. You'll see what shows are coming. Next week we have uh, Pokemon Go at your library. And down below this list of what's coming up are archived Encompass Live sessions. And that's where you can go and look and see something that you missed or you want to watch again. Maybe you just want to see the part where Tom Watson was talking again, and that'd be great. You can find them on our webpage with a quick search, and that's all it takes. Okay, now I have to find my gizmo. There it is. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you for your questions for Tom. I'm so glad that he was able to connect with us and, and be on our show today, and we'll see you next Wednesday at 10 o'clock Central Time for our next Encompass Live.